For the last 20 years or so, I've had a secret passion. No, for scuba diving. So when Yorkshire Television found out about it, they suggested that I make a programme. They promised me the ultimate diving experience. They wanted me to fly to the Bahamas and help hand feed a school of Caribbean reef sharks. Well, naturally I said no. I wish I'd never changed my mind. Before coming face to face with a group of sharks, I'm going to get acquainted with just one or two. So I'm entrusting my life to a man called Stuart. Okay, what we're, we're gonna dive here is a shipwreck called the Bahama Mama. It's a 100-foot steel freighter. Uh, which is in about 50 feet of water. And occasionally, around this wreck, we see sharks. It's not a guaranteed thing, and generally they're pretty skittish. They're not used to divers. So hopefully it's a good place to come and, and kind of get used to being in the water with these sharks. Now these sharks aren't in a pen. I mean, we're in their ocean. These are wild animals. So if we do see the sharks, we've got to observe them. We're not going to chase after them and pull on their tails. That annoys them. I'd rather like keep my hands on my arms. Thanks very much. Unfortunately, this white flesh can look like a piece of fish. So if you're up here and you're going, hey, Stuart, over here, look at this blenny. They may mistake this for a piece of food and could possibly bite your hand. So that's why we keep our... Definitely. Good note, thank you. I just wanted to get a little... Feel for the water. I don't know why I'm doing this, because... Uh... Huh? He's only putting bloody fish in, isn't he? <laughs> the swine. <laughs> they should have a bloody big viewing public at home. They want me back in one piece. They have the, the kamikaze club. The mark of the kamikaze diver. You sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> Absolutely not. That, I just I know what I'm doing because I want the sharks around you, not around That's me. Right. Well, I'm bloody washing it off before I go in. I tell you that. <laughs> That's not very nice. I'm not sweating because I'm scared. It's because it's hot. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. He's sweating for another reason. He's hoping that he might find some sharks for us. Because otherwise, he doesn't get paid. Well, no going back. What I've always loved about diving is the weightlessness. The closest thing on Earth to being a spaceman. Like space, we really don't belong here. I head for the wheelhouse as Stuart tries to attract the sharks. I'm no fool. I'm going to see my first shark from the safety of a ship. That's it. Full steam ahead. Let's get out of here. This old ship has been truly claimed by the sea now a haven of marine life, not all as menacing as the shark. Well, no sign yet. Are we in the wrong place? Part of me wishes we are, and that the sharks have better things to do on a Saturday. Then suddenly, as if from nowhere, one of the most misunderstood creatures on the planet. I just hope it won't misunderstand me. I've seen many creatures in all my years of diving, and I've never been this close to a shark. 
Still, there are two of us. We outnumber him, so what am I afraid of? Uh-oh. OK, you've made your point. I'm more than happy to keep as much distance as possible between yours truly and the world's most efficient killing machine. Steward has a different idea. He likes them closer. Luckily, the sharks don't seem hungry. <laughs> oh, I spoke too soon. Watching those jaws in action, I realise that although this is my first time, my guide, Stuart, swims with sharks virtually every day. <laughs> of course, he's off his head. Him. Close to a shark, you appreciate not just their sheer power, but their incredible beauty. Close to me, you'd appreciate sheer terror, excitement and a willingness to keep all my own limbs. However, Anything he can do, I can do. There you go. Welcome to the Kamikaze Club, Stuart. <laughs> I'm trying not to think that tomorrow be in the middle of dozens of them. Pussy cats. <laughs> Nothing to it. Nothing huh? to it. <laughs> what? Sharks. Yeah, show me something, you know, dangerous, will you? <laughs> now this is a big hit with the tourists. The world's only trained troop of marching flamingos. Or so it says in the brochure. <laughs> and I thought I was in show business. Hey, thank you. But I want to get back underwater. This is what I've come for, to experience the real sea life of the Bahamas. Unlike the flamingos, Bryland the Labrador does this because he wants to. He used to feel left out when his owner went diving. Still, as they say, maybe you can teach an old sea dog a new trick. The harbourside bars are where the real action is. This is where the locals hang out and come to eat. Here in the Caribbean, they have a dish that they've been eating for thousands of years. It is their national dish, it is a delicacy, and it's called the conch. And here he is, the most famous conch dealer in the Caribbean, Goldie. Lovely jubbly. I like call Goldie because of my teeth. I had these teeth in my mouth for many years, and after I put them in and put Goldie on the teeth, they call me Goldie. Is that good for the pulls of birds, does it? Exactly. How many of these conch do you reckon that you go through in your little store here a week? I actually have about sometimes five to six hundred a day. Basically, about 35 to 4,000 a week. Show me how you get this uh, conch out of its shell here. Well, that's the way you take it out. In order to get it out, you got to crack a hole in the shell, which is right now. Take a little small table knife. It look easy, but it's not. Tickle him under the arm, and here he comes. 
this is it. That's it, is it? And people love to people eat People love that. this. And this part of it is, what I'm pulling out now, this is what a man mostly loves. You should try this. Look at that. It's an Avadisia. And I'll try this piece. When you say it's an aphrodisiac, what does it make you do? I mean... It make you go a little longer than you usually go. <laughs> what, you mean, to the toilet or what? No, not to the toilet, to the woman. Oh, to the woman? I'm exactly. sorry. Exactly. Oh. Right. This part right here, what I'm cutting off is the guts of the count we use to fish with. That, that bit you can't eat? No. No, surprised me that. This part here is the skin. It's a little tough, but we boil it along with some conch and make conch fritters. If you ever eat conch fritters, the skin is what goes into the conch fritters along with conch. All right, OK. And um... this year is the meat, what you actually eat. That's, that's it, is it? That's, yeah. that's the... This part right here, what I'm holding on here, this is his feet. This is what he walks with. So you definitely can't eat this. But actually, meat is what you eat. This has given you a full set of gold molars. Exactly. I think that aphrodisiac's beginning to work. What are you doing tonight? Watch out for the girls. <laughs> I should tell the girls, watch out for you. Yeah? <laughs> oh, quick, I'm off! <laughs> A couple of years ago, someone in Britain had the brilliant idea of inventing a clockwork radio. 150 years before that, we invented something equally brilliant, the Clockwork Lighthouse. The Hopetown Lighthouse is one of the last clockwork lighthouses in the world. It's like a giant grandfather clock and has to be wound up by hand. To do this, Edward, the lighthouse keeper, climbs 120 steps winds the weight right up to the top, and then walks back down again. It's a job that takes Edward 20 minutes, and one he does every two hours of the day. He's pretty fit, is our Edward. I'm here just for the view. Out there, the reef has claimed countless ships and lives. A reminder that you shouldn't mess with the sea and the creatures that live there. Tomorrow, I'm going back out there for a very close encounter with the Caribbean reef shark. And part of me is very nervous indeed. Like anyone about to dive into a school of sharks, I need to take my mind off it. What I need is an adrenaline rush. Beneath these seemingly still, quiet, tranquil waters run the most treacherous sea currents. I'm about to experience the current cut, the fastest cut in the West. The moment you hit the water, you feel it take you. Without moving a muscle, the water picks you up and carries you so fast, it feels like you're flying. I'm traveling at about 15 knots and can't do a thing about it. I'm like Superman. Invincible. I've left a bigot. Yes! Go on, my son! Go on! It's the last furlong! Yes! Go on! Ah! Oh! Beaches broke! But if you prefer your rushes in the trouser area, this is for you.
And I still got my trunks on. Which is quite a feat in itself. Oh. Oh. Hysterical. That's for birthing. Birthing, I've just birthed. Having experienced the biggest enema in the world, it's now time to get serious. I can't put it off any longer. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> it's more like it. Yeah. Don't feel so bad about it now. Expect we're taking this with us. Yes. Good to firm. Load it up. The cage isn't coming with us. And as we pull away from land, I hope I'm not saying goodbye to it for the last time. I'm becoming a bit restless. Fidgety. I wonder why I'm getting so nervous. Twenty years ago, if we saw a shark, we'd get out of the water. I mean, no ifs, ands, or buts. I mean, we were terrified of sharks. Um, Ten years ago, if you told me that we would be going in the water and taking food down there and purposely feeding sharks while we were underwater, I would have said you're crazy. But we're doing that today. And it's just uh, amazing how much we've learned right here in the last 20 years. We need to protect the shark. They're endangered all over the world. Their species are dwindling. And um, I think what we're doing out here is, is very important. We've never understood the shark. And what we don't understand, we destroy. Since 1994, we've killed some 50 million sharks, mostly out of fear, ignorance, and the bravado of having your photograph taken with a dead one. OK, the dive site is called the Arena, and it's in 40 feet of water. And we're going to be diving the population of Caribbean reef sharks. We're actually going to bring a box of fish parts down with us. And when that comes down, the sharks are going to come very close. In fact, they'll probably be banging into us. I wouldn't be surprised if they knock your mask and dislodge that a few times. And we're going to have to feed all the food out of the box before we come back up. Once all the food's gone, then they'll slowly move away. Why can't we come up before you've got rid of all the food? Well, we could, we could, but there'll be lots of sharks kind of all snapping around us. Snapping? Yes. And you're even going to be able to see the teeth. You'll be able to see the different rows. They have up to seven rows of teeth. Their jaws will come out, and you'll see all the teeth, all the rows of teeth inches away from him. And sometimes when they bite, the, the teeth will fall out and they'll drop down. Maybe we can get a couple teeth for souvenirs. It's Very great. exciting. You'll have up 10 sharks banging all around you. It's, it's really quite a, quite a rush. Yes, yeah, a rush to boy the toilet. <laughs> yes. You put these on your hands first. I don't know I'm going to get that one under my wetsuit. It feel a little uncomfortable. Okay. Stuart's comforting bedside manner becomes even better as we prepare for the dive. Okay. I thought you said this stuff attracts you. Well, we, that's why we put it under our wetsuit, because it's only going to have this much showing, so that's only, only your hands would be getting bitten. I mean, they... <laughs> it's not fair, you know. He needs to put his uh, other hands in the way. It's a little bit awkward. <clears throat> Listen, it makes you bulletproof when you have these on. Yes. Excellent. You've seen this, have you? This is serious stuff. Well, he's done it before, and he's here to tell the tale. Mind you, he has been bitten, he's told me. So I leave you with that thought. As much as I don't like the creatures of the deep, we shouldn't be doing what we're doing. There again, 
wouldn't be exciting, would it? Beneath the surface, I see immediately what Stuart had rather quaintly described as a population of sharks. It's like diving into a city. They're everywhere. All I can do is place my trust in Stuart and my faith in God. very hard to believe that the shark is being hunted so fiercely when you're surrounded by what seems to be thousands of them. You can't get it out of your mind that though Stuart assures me that they're only interested in the food in his box. The stories of Jaws occasionally flash past your very eyes. Sometimes too close. They are just coming from everywhere. They are now smelling the food that's in Stuart's box. They're getting braver all the time. I'm not. It's the ones behind you that you have to worry about. Stuart hadn't mentioned was that storms meant the sharks hadn't been fed for a week. And so the frenzy starts. I put my hand to my face mask, because if I lose it, I also lose my hand trying to get it back. Stuart signals he's okay, and nearly wasn't. That hurt. Oh. Once in a lifetime, but only once. You're absolutely right. And with that, I'm going to sign off. <laughs> <laughs>